How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and this is just a one-off video where I thought I'd showcase for you the 50 chests I received from the Gorge event that I went ahead and opened all at one time. So unlike a lot of people who might have gathered this many chests over a period of a couple of weeks or so, I'm basically getting all these items in at one moment in time and I thought that might help uh, eliminate any variables that might exist in the algorithm that determines what you get. Now, uh, that's not the only reason. Some some people might just might be interested to see what I ended up getting from playing the f the gorge, and this hopefully gives you an idea of that. So, there are a couple of there are a few stats that I guess I should rattle rattle off here that I gathered. So these are the results overall that I received from opening these 50 gorge chests. Uh, the numbers are as follows. Um, 101 common items, uh, 47 classy items, 40 spiffy items, 10 distinguished items, and 2 elegant items. So it might be pretty much as you would expect. Uh, that being said, I think I got a few less elegance than what the average is based on the number of chests that I actually opened. So that's a bit unfortunate, but yeah, that's been my experience with it so far. And luckily, I just I, w I had the means to go ahead and buy all of the skins that I wanted. So it's not a big deal that I didn't get uh, as many elegants. I got a really good elegant. It was the the new Hambat skin. I thought that was a pretty cool one, but obviously there are other ones that I wanted as well. And just receiving two elegants out of a total of 50 chests, you know, that averages out to one per 25. And, you know, at that rate, I would be getting a total of four that, yeah, even if I pushed it, because most likely I won't be playing the Gorge past level 100 if I even get up that high. I think uh, for the Forge, it got around to like level 75 or level 80. So it's unlikely, I think, that I'll get further than that in the Gorge, because it seems like the best way to earn XP in this match, this, um, this event, I should say, is to just run up the clock as long as possible. And you end up with these matches where players have taken upwards of six plus hours to complete it. And I am i just don't have the time or really the inclination to sit around and do exactly this for six hours. Like three hours per day is usually enough and I'm ready to move on to something else. So uh, in addition to the skins that are going on behind you, as you can see here, I thought I would go ahead and mention a few other things. So basically, at the moment, I'm quite busy in in real life. There is, like, at this time of year is a very busy time of year for my job. And yes, for those who are wondering, I do most certainly have a job. Um, when when you're in, like, when you're involved in a small business, generally you do not have very predictable work hours. So when demand scales up, you just work longer, and that has been. That's been requiring a good amount of my time recently. So this event was very poorly timed for me because just about, I think the very day it started was also the very day that uh, things really started picking up in terms of um, my my time being required for, the, for job purposes. So I have not been able to dedicate as much time to the event as I probably would have otherwise. So you'll be seeing videos like this as sort of a one-off to fill time and whatnot, so that way there's always something going up, because I I feel better personally when I'm putting up one video per day. Like, it's not just about putting new videos on the channel necessarily, but it gives me a sense of accomplishment to be able to put out one video per day. And the days that I don't, I generally start to feel a little bit more anxious, and if it goes two days in a row without putting out any video, then I become really anxious, and it starts bothering me. So I, I feel this sort of pressure to put up videos, and I would like them to be something interesting. I'm not gonna just gonna put up random one-off clips, uh, like without commentary. So I thought I would try to fill the space here and sort of let you in on some of the things that I've been working on outside of the gorge itself. So recently there was a bit of a survey done. I shouldn't even say recently. It was a couple of months ago already. I, I asked you, you know, the people who are watching for their opinions on you know, what they would like to see from this channel going forward. And to be honest, like, there was a little bit of everything. There was not anything that really stood out, so I guess the good news is that I'm not necessarily doing anything really incorrectly. It seems to all be pretty okay-okay. 
which is good news. And I'll probably be uh, doing a little bit more on that survey or making a video about that survey in the future to talk a little bit more about some of the conclusions that I drew from it. Right, so I know at this point, this thing is sort of turning into, I wouldn't say a vlog because you don't see me in it, but it, it's basically an update of sorts combined in a, in a video like this. So, like, if you don't want to listen to me, you can always just mute me and you can still watch the stuff going on in the background. So in terms of like what, what happens going forward with the channel, uh, I think it's by and large going to be pivoting more toward, to focus on survival type games and uh, there will always be an emphasis on tutorial type videos. Uh, those are de most definitely the most successful ones, the ones that people are more most interested in seeing, but they also require the greatest amount of work. And now you can hear an air conditioner in the background. Now normally I would just go over there and turn my air conditioner off. But we're at the point here where I don't have time to do that kind of editing. I don't have that time to pay I don't have time to pay attention to this stuff, right? I've got like some minutes here. I want to still stream a couple of hours tonight. And I just don't want to put up with the air conditioner. There's the air conditioner in the background, though. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It, it, it fudges with my noise reduction software. When I train the noise reduction software on it, you just can't cut out with the air conditioner. And it'll probably sound a little bit choppy because of it, if I even bother running it through the uh, post-processing. I hope I do. We'll see. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, a couple of the things that I've been working on more in real life that sort of pertains to my interest in like videography in general is I got a couple of GoPro cameras and I'm using them in the in a business capacity or for the business to document uh, procedures and it's given me you know it's been an interesting time I enjoy learning about a lot of different things I guess you could say like I'm somebody who's just very curious generally have always been really curious like when I was a kid I would gen I would take apart like a lawnmower, take the engine apart and then put it back together just to see how it worked. And I truly believe that, you know, once you understand the fundamentals of something, it becomes a lot easier to, you know, recompile it to best fit the situation that you need it for. And so for me, uh, just getting more into the real world side of making videos or at least recording videos, because up until this point, most of the video related stuff that I've done has all been recorded from my screen on my desktop. And it's just been a different perspective because one of the the most, like for me, the most underrated thing is actually finding good angles to shoot from. Now, this is something that I don't think I really truly appreciated how much time can go into finding a good angle until I started doing it myself. Because, you know, you don't just want to shoot everything from the perspective that you would, a person, uh, a personal perspective is okay and all of that, but it's not necessarily that that interesting, right? And you need to take a look at outside your own personal perspective to see things in a different light, just to capture a different side of an activity or whatnot. And I think that's what's really interesting about it. So I got these couple of GoPro cameras and you know, there's a story in there uh, of itself. So basically, they ran a deal on the camera that I bought like two days before I bought it. And then I was like, okay, I, I finally, I'm going to go ahead and buy the GoPro. It's a little bit more expensive than the other stuff that's available, but you know, it's a very solid ecosystem. And you know, it's got a decent amount of resale value if I decide to sell it later on. It's not going to be completely a piece of garbage that someone just throws in the trash can, right? You know, you got a GoPro. Um, but the problem was that by the time I got around to buying the camera, it was like the sale had ended and now it was $50 more. So I put down the $50 extra, it's like $300 for the camera that I got. I ended up regretting buying that one, but we'll get into that a bit later. And after putting down that $300, like two, three days later, it goes on sale again for $50 off. And I'm like, oh, come on. And apparently they do that on their website from time to time where they just discount this camera on and off, on and off, on and off. And I happened to hit it on off cycle. So what I could have done is I could have RMA'd the camera back because they have like a 30 day guarantee, satisfaction guarantee. You just have to pay shipping. But then I was like, well, the shipping itself is going to cost me $20. And so I'll just get $30 back and then I have to bother uh, putting in the invoice for the RMA. I've got to, got to find a box, maybe I have to call up FedEx or whatever. Uh, it just seemed like more trouble and was worse, so I ended up keeping the camera. And the reason that I wanted the next, the higher level camera, it's like $400 for that camera, 
is because it can shoot uh, 240 frames a second at 10, full 1080p instead of 720. And it can also shoot 4K at 60 frames a second instead of 4K at 30 frames a second. And it has its own dedicated encoding chip on it, which is supposed to be a lot more efficient than the one that the Hero 5 uses, which is the one I got. So just today, I went ahead and I said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and buy the, uh, another GoPro. So now I'm, I'm going to have the GoPro Hero 5, the GoPro Hero 6. And then I also have a GoPro session that I just randomly bought because uh, the people who I work with, they're going to find it a lot more convenient to just be able to clip something like a GoPro session on their cap and walk around with that to record as opposed to needing the, the entire harness that I generally use because I have uh, purchased a stabilizer. Uh, it's a gimbal and it really helps you get really steady shots, but most people are not going to be willing to wear a harness around the place. It gets in the way and whatnot. And this, the gimbal itself is like $300. So it's, it's all very expensive. And um, just before we wrap up here, one of the other things that I noticed once getting into this videography stuff uh, is that shooting in 4K takes up a lot of space. Like you can run out of space very quickly and it's much, it's happening at a, a much faster rate than it happened with the types of videos that I was doing here for YouTube based off of video game content because I was only shooting those in 1080 or recording them in 1080 whereas now it's looking at 4K like I'm looking at the potential for 4K I gotta get more hard drives I gotta get some sort of NAS storage system up and going and all of this takes a lot of time but it's something that I'm very interested in at the moment and I might do more videos a few of them based on the GoPro cameras on this channel I'm not too sure about it I would like to do something with it, but we'll see how it happen, how it works because it generally is, it doesn't necessarily fit this niche. But I hope that gives you sort of an idea of what I'm working on outside of the channel and work. Uh, that's like been one of my big pet projects of late. Uh, another one is I'm trying to learn Adobe Illustrator, but that's, that's not quite as serious as the whole GoPro thing, especially in terms of the amount that I've invested in the project at this moment. So uh, that concludes this video. Uh, I, hope, I hope it is a little bit of an interesting vlog typey thing. I don't even know what to call these things. An update, I guess, to let you know what was going on. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope to see you next time.